I'm Jennifer. I'm the editor of Irish Country Magazine. About a year ago, we started a Mentor Me program where we interviewed successful businesswomen from all over the country and offered you, the reader, the chance to be mentored by that woman. We want to be involved as well, obviously, and we offered the same thing for the magazine industry. We were completely overwhelmed by all of you and your interest in getting involved in magazines and writing and publishing, and we couldn't mentor everybody individually, so we came up with this idea. Everybody that was interested has written in, asked some questions, and today, hopefully, I'm going to answer them all. So the first question comes from Tanya and she asks, how does one begin to write freelance articles for an Irish magazine such as Irish Country Magazine? Uh, many magazines state that they do not accept or publish unsolicited articles and what exactly is the process, etc. Well, Tanya, it is true that a lot of magazines say that they don't accept unsolicited articles, but that's kind of a very vague term. We do accept unsolicited articles. It's uh, by commission, I suppose. You have to email the editor, say what you're going to write about, have a conversation about that. They'll either say yes or no. Uh, they might want to develop your piece a little bit and then you'll be commissioned. What you should never do is just send in a completed article. An editor doesn't want to see that. Um, it mightn't be the right tone for the magazine. There hasn't been a chat about it. And that's what they mean by unsolicited pieces. Don't send in a, a completed article but we're always more than happy to hear from new people all the time. Tanya also asks, where and to whom does one forward articles for consideration? So this is a really important thing. Um, you know, the industry in Ireland isn't that big and a lot of times people send in messages uh, to whom it may concern, dear madam, dear sir. It doesn't take much to do a little bit of research and find out somebody's name. It's a really basic thing. But as soon as you see an email coming in with a dear sir or madam, you kind of think that the person hasn't made the effort to find out enough about you and probably won't do research in their article, in the completed article. So find out the name. Hi, Jennifer, how are you? Something like that. If we've met somewhere, include that. Oh, remember we met at that event? Something like that is perfect. And then just take it from there. It's, it's not that difficult. And I promise that we're not that scary. Julie says, I'm not a qualified journalist or have no university degree. So is there any way to write articles, reviews for local or national magazines or papers? Yeah, local magazines and papers are a brilliant way to get started. Um, it's the same process. Contact the editor, say, hey, I have a really good story. You might have a story about a neighbour, a community event, something like that. There's loads of local papers, loads of lo local publications, and it's a fantastic way to get used to the commissioning process. Those people in those publications are so excited to have new stories and things you know that, that you can write about. So do it, start off. And blogging is a really good way as well. You have to find your voice when you're writing. It's very hard to start writing from cold, just you know, co be commissioned straight away. I always recommend that if you have a blog or something like that and you get really used to writing, find your voice, get into the swing of things. It's a good place to start. Julie also asks, will it be a case of just writing about a topic or, or a review of a place that I've been to and sending it in or actually contacting the publications? Like I said, it's contacting the publications. You could have been to an amazing restaurant where you live, but it might have been reviewed really recently. So that wouldn't be of any interest to an editor. So again, contact the editor, say this is what I'm thinking of and have a conversation about it. Julie finally asked, would you recommend any courses other than third level education in journalism, creative writing that would be beneficial to me? Absolutely. There are so many of them. If you look up creative writing, .ie, they have a list of courses there. Really, really helpful resource. I personally love the Irish Writers Centre. I've done some courses in there. I have loads of friends that do courses or teach courses there. They're really interesting. They might be one evening a week over eight weeks or 12 weeks, or it could be a more intense one that, that lasts for a week or two weeks. Also, there's a place called Big Smoke Writing Factory, which are really cool, very helpful. And if they don't, if their courses are very Dublin based and you're not Dublin based, they can often recommend really good places to go around the country. Sharon Dolan Darcy asks, how best for me to branch into mainstream magazine industry from a local community publication? You're already writing, that's brilliant. So you're halfway there. All you really need to do is to start uh, approaching national publications and the editors there. There are sub-level 
editors in different uh, areas of interest for the bigger newspapers. So you're never going to contact the editor of the paper. You're going to look for the features editor, the magazine editor, literary editor, news editor, somebody like that. Again, a little bit of research, find out a name and just start pitching stories. That's the best way to do it. Sharon also asks, any tips on time management from when writing from home? No, I'm the worst procrastinator in the world. Tea, lunch, walking the dog, Jerry Springer, absolutely anything. I have no tips. It's really hard to do it when you're freelancing. You just have to be very, very disciplined. Try and treat it like a working day, maybe. Make sure you're at a desk or your kitchen table at nine o'clock. Work till 11 when you might have a tea break in an office. Go back to work till one. I'm terrible. I can't do it. Best of luck with that one. Sharon also says, is the industry cutthroat or is the answer to that an industry secret? Yes. No, it's not. It's a lovely industry. It's a really small industry, like everything in Ireland. Everybody knows everybody within an industry. And if you're getting into it, you get to know people really quickly as well. Um, I know all of the editors for the other magazines. I'm really good friends with about half of them and I'm, you know, passing acquaintances with the other. Everyone is lovely. Everyone gets on really well. And I think it's one of those big Devil Wears Prada myths that everybody is um, mean and nasty. I promise you, we're not at all. It probably seems really um, scary to try and approach editors and things like that. But, you know, we're just trying to fill pages and get publications out. So, you know, by all means, just drop an email and say hello. Elizabeth wants to know what would be the best strategy for gaining employment within the magazine industry. The magazine industry in Ireland is really small. There aren't that many publications um, and full time employment can be difficult and freelance is normally the way most people get a full time job. If you're a really good freelancer, if you have great story ideas, feature ideas, and you start pitching them in, as soon as a job opportunity comes up, normally you think about the freelancers that you've been working with. So I would always suggest that you don't aim for a full-time gig straight away. You aim to be a really good freelancer and then you're on an editor's mind. Kira asks, um, is working as an intern a good foothold in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't called internships when I started out in the industry. It was called work experience. And I left a full-time job that was pretty well paid and took a no pay work experience job in a magazine because I really wanted to do that. Very quickly, I progressed to being a, a junior editor and assistant and made my way up from there. But it's been around forever and I have given a lot of interns that have worked with me in different publications a full time job. And I think it's a great way to get into a building to do absolutely anything you can be the most helpful, pleasant person you can be and just make people think that they can't live without you, basically. Um, that's what loads of the interns that have worked for me over the years did, and they all have full time jobs now. So I think interning is great. Not exploitative internships, not ones that go on forever that have nothing in return. You want to make sure that you're being taught something and that you're being used properly, not being exploited in any way. So just bear that in mind as well. If you feel uncomfortable, by all means, don't stay there. Tara asks, do you need to be a journalist to work for a magazine such as Irish Country Magazine? No, you don't. Um, in my last job, I hired a beauty editor that had a really great beauty blog and wasn't a journalist at all. Um, I just really liked the way she wrote and I really liked her attitude. So that's why I say things like blogging um, and writing for yourself and getting experience that way is a really good thing. You don't have to be a trained journalist. Most of the really good journalists that I know in newspapers never study journalism at all. They just have a really good eye for a story and they know how to tell it very well. Um, experience and who you know in this industry is probably more important than the college course that you end up doing because once you're in the industry for about five years, nobody ever asks you where you went to college after that. Um, Stephanie wants to know, is it possible to intern for a publication part time? I've only ever seen full time opportunities. I currently work four days a week to focus on writing and freelance work, but would love to spend time working in a magazine environment. It is possible to intern part time, but by part time, most publications probably mean 
three days a week at a minimum. It's a very busy office environment and somebody coming in for one day a week probably would disturb the flow of the office. You know, there are very few industries that would allow somebody to come in for one day a week when they're getting experience. But certainly two or three days a week would be really helpful. And if you find a publication, you know, that you can work with along those lines, that's brilliant and take it from there. Uh, Fiona wants to know what is the process involved in deciding who's going to be on a cover, what stories are going to grab the reader's attention, etc. Um, Fiona, I am never not thinking about the cover. I'm constantly thinking about it. The magazine is monthly, so it's a four week cycle um, and about halfway through the issue before, so six weeks before an issue goes, I start, I'm thinking about the next cover. I have about six or eight women on my list at any given time that I'm thinking about, that I'm, I'm thinking of concepts for, that I'm talking to their agents um, and trying to book in. And Clara and Roisin that work with me are very sick of me always coming up with ideas and then dashing them because I'm not sure that they're perfect. It's a collaborative process. Um, I talk to stylists, to writers, to the girls on the team and try and figure out who is the best person for the reader. A good editor is always just thinking about the reader. That is the bottom line. I just want to have the right person for the reader. We're very um, committed to finding inspirational Irish women for the cover and somebody that has a really good story. It's not just about beautiful pictures. It's about having a really good story to tell. Um, and, you know, there aren't that many Irish celebrities, so it can be really hard to find the right person for you um, that you'll be interested in. But I am never not thinking about the cover. I'm thinking about the cover now and the one after that as well. Mary is um, currently pursuing academic research in Trinity to widen her knowledge base um, in a well-being capacity. And she wants to know if um, the industry is interested in well-researched academic pieces or if it's just, you know, kind of light-hearted pieces um, and based around product sales. Um, a magazine is ultimately entertainment, um, a luxury and something that people spend their private time reading and enjoying. Um, and so in that capacity we're not really interested in academic features but we are really interested in things that women are interested in so we are interested in mindfulness health well-being and we cover a lot of that it's just a matter of writing it in an accessible way that people would enjoy reading so mary if you have ideas in that sector if you have things that you think women really want to know about and that there are areas that you can help women with absolutely magazines are interested in hearing that it's just about writing it in a way that isn't academic is more um accessible enjoyable and uh, luxurious for women you know yourself if you're at home and you have a cup of coffee and a chocolate and a magazine in front of you you don't want to be lectured you want to be informed in a really helpful um enthusiastic positive way so if you can write those pieces absolutely we want to hear from you Sophie says, would you be able to describe a typical working day for a member of your editorial team? No. And that's the best part about working in magazines. There isn't a typical day. The closest that you would get to a typical day is on press week. Um, go to press on a Thursday. So Monday to Thursday of that week is very much um, changed to your desk. You can't move. You're reading all the pages. You're sorting out all the last little bits that have to come together in order for the magazine to go to press. Apart from that, every day is different, and I really mean that. Yesterday, I was on a beach in Donovate. I'm a little bit sunburnt, uh, doing a cover shoot. The day before that, I was trying on diamonds and boodles, which was very fancy. And then the day before that, I was writing, 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 and organizing a garden for bloom. So no, there is no, no typical day. And I think that's why everybody works in magazines. That's what they're drawn to. It's a really lovely job, a really lovely job. It's so incredibly busy. Um, if I can be at my desk at eight in the morning, I'm happy, but I think that I'm a little bit late because I have so much to cram into my day and I couldn't be happier doing that. Um, not having a typical day is one of the best parts of the job. You're crazy busy. You're often very, very stressed. You're often freaking out. Um, and then every time the magazine arrives in the Tuesday after you go to press, you do a little jump and you start all over again and it's brilliant. Tanya wants a step-by-step -step guide uh, to go from writing an article 
to forwarding it for perusal, to receiving comments, to editing and to publication. So Tanya, like I said earlier, um, the commissioning process is very straightforward. You contact an editor with your idea. The more details your idea, the better. So if you have, this is the headline, this is why people are gonna to wanna to read it. These are the people I might speak to in the article. This is the crux of the article. This is how many words I think it should be. And this is when I can get it to you. Um, that's really helpful. An editor will come back to you with either a yes or a no or a conversation about it. They might like half of your idea and say, but could you take it in this direction? So you might have a bit of back and forth over that. You'll be given a deadline and a word count. Um, and then you go off and write the piece and you file it on the deadline day. Not like at midnight on the deadline day, like sometime in the morning of deadline day. Um, and the editor will read it, maybe not immediately, so don't freak out maybe a couple of days later, and they'll come back to you and say, that's perfect, thank you so much for that, send your invoice in. Or they might come back with a few comments. They might need more quotes from different people. Normally you would want quotes from about three people to make a balanced article. One person is not is never enough. Two people is fine if it's hard to get people, three people would be about perfect. Um, so they might need more quotes from people. They might need it to be shortened or lengthened a little bit. They might ask you for something that's called a pullout box. So that's a little maybe fact box or a separate box of information that would go on the page. And there might be a little bit of back and forward about that. You refile or resubmit and that's basically it. The editor takes it from there. So it is uh, subbed. So that's sub edited. So that's checked for grammar and spelling and length and things like that. It's put on a page with a headline and a sub headline. Um, the designers all do that. Then it'll come back to the editorial team to have a final look at, and then you'll see it in print. And that's basically the process. So that's basically all the questions or a sample at least of all of the questions, because some of them are quite similar. So my top tips would be to get writing, be that in a local publication or on a blog. Make sure that you find your voice. Have some confidence in yourself. None of the editors are terrifying. We're all just looking to fill pages. So it's absolutely fine to get in touch. If you come to one of our events or any publications events, please go and say hello to the editor. It's much harder to say no to people that you've met. So if you can send me an email and go, remember we met at that event in Dublin or we met at that event in Kerry and I will remember you. It's much harder to say, no, I haven't got time to read your submission. It's a great way to get on people's minds submit pieces and just keep resubmitting pieces. If you're knocked back once or twice, just come up with another idea and keep going. Eventually it will all come together. If you're able to intern, apply for internships, absolutely. It's a great way to get into the industry. And that's it, just keep plugging away. It's a lovely industry to work in. Uh, writing for a living is, although not massively financially rewarding, it's a great fun way to earn a living. Um, and I hope I hear from you with all your ideas really soon. Thanks for watching.